Hi friends, welcome to our channel. In this film, we will see it's a routine case with 16 diopter aval power. We are making a three planar incision with 2.8 mm incision size. The entry is done. Now it's time to put air, as I always use before putting the blue dye to stain the anterior capsule properly and avoiding any damage to the endothelium of the cornea. The blue dye is removed with the help of the Visco HPMC 2%. The Visco dilatation you have seen. Now it's time to proceed with capsular axis. We are using 26 needle for capsulotomy. It is in anti-clockwise direction. We are trying to have a rexus of 5 mm. You can also observe in inferior quadrant there is some calcification in the nucleus and cortical part. The axis is completed. With an hydro, with a 27 goes cannula, we are doing multiple quadrant hydro and in between we are decompressing the nucleus also to avoid any formation of pressure behind the nucleus. I keep on doing hydro till I feel that the nucleus is free from all 360 degree. The hydro is completed. Now, before doing the nuclear rotation, we put visco. A dialer is used for the nuclear rotation. The nucleus is freely movable. Now we can proceed with FACO1. Visco is injected to form the chamber. Now we are doing stop and chop with FACO1. You can see the parameters. As I entered into the eye, I just observed sudden deepening of the chamber. Considering LIDRS syndrome, I just lifted the iris to decrease the deepening of the chamber. Now we are proceeding with FACO1 with a stop and chop, making the tunnel one and a half width of the FACO trip and 90% depth of the nucleus. Now, we will try to break the nucleus into two halves. We have got the break. Now, we will shift to FACO2 and we will eat both the nuclear pieces by dividing further. You can see the parameters of FACO2. We are lifting the upper side piece. The whole piece came out. We divided it into two. By vertical chop, the piece is to be eaten into the center of the eye to avoid injury to corneal endothelium and keeping your probe away from the posterior capsule. The center part of the eye is the safest place. You get the maximum area for the phaco emulsification there. Now, the complete piece is removed. It's time to shift to FACO3, the epinuclear phase. The best place to start with is just opposite to your incisional site. Now I am trying to take out the epinucleus with the FACO probe under FACO3. It seems to be a little bit sticky. One thing which was coming in my mind was to remove the probe and to do again hydro. But somehow I proceeded. I am not able to hold the epinucleus, not able to get the catch. Some part I got, but still a major chunk is left behind. If you have your epinucleus remaining after FACO and you want to do 
removal of epinucleus with your coaxial IA it takes more time now with the coaxial IA I am trying to remove this thick epinuclear sheet I am getting some parts but not the complete sheet we are able to remove I am trying from all the sides I catch hold of some bigger part of the epinucleus I go behind the epinuclear sheet between the epinuclear sheet and the posterior capsule now we are eating it into the center of the eye only inferior part is left now the vacuum is 450 at present I am going behind the epinuclear sheet and trying to lift it up and applying the vacuum away from the posterior capsule to avoid any posterior capsular rent. Now it seems that we are able to remove the complete sheet of epinucleus but As you will see, the pupil is getting smaller because of the excessive manipulation and long duration of the surgery. There is some part leaving behind. Now we will see the magic of the phenocane. We are using phenocane. It's a combination of lignocane, phenylephrine and tropicamide. I use it in all cases where my pupil is small, intraoperative pupil got small. So you should never have any hesitancy of using phenocane. Now you can see the dilatation. I am putting visco. Just see the magic of phenocane in inferior quadrant, inferior nasal side. You will be able to see a thick sheet of cortex and epinucleus. Maybe because it was calcified so I was not able to get hold of it now we have a full dilatation and see how it easy it will be once you have a full dilatation you are able to see the capsular margin the anterior capsular margin the whole sheet came out so it smoothly yes and it's our IA done completely now it's time to put some visco to form the chamber in this case, we are using care group magnificent lens. It's an advanced monofocal lens. It's a wound assisted delivery. I use in help of dialer on the side port to push the lens through injector. As you can see in this lens, you can see two holes. It's just like same what we get in Palma lenses. Initially when I saw a few cases of other surgeons of magnificent lens, I thought it must be Palma lens but the patient were saying they underwent FACO and later on when I started using it, I came to know that this lens has two holes in the optic haptic junction. Now we are washing the remaining visco above the lens. It's very important to wash the visco properly above the lens and if possible behind the lens as you will see now we are going behind the lens just near the edge of the lens just keep your irrigation on and when you are confident you can do aspiration also as you are seeing the bolus of the visco is coming out from behind the lens slowly don't be in hurry here. Yes, we have finished the visco wash. Now it's time to hydrate the wound. 
I first always hydrate the main wound. We'll wash some visco with the hydro. Now hydrating both the sides of the main wound. Just take care to keep watch over the desmets membrane of the section to avoid any desmet detachment. Now through side port we are forming the chamber with the hydration of the side port. Yes, the case is done. I check with the tooth forceps. Thanks for watching the film.